Right. So, uh, in today's uh, video, I'm going to discuss about uh, job description based coaching on a high level note when it comes to the role of a scrum master. So, this is a main video which is intended for the people who are applying jobs as a scrum master because most of the people who are applying for jobs for scrum master were from IT and as less for non-IT. Having a knowledge for a scrum master, especially in the field of IT application development, is all better to understand the technicalities, technical terminologies, jargons. This sort of understanding is essentially required. <clears throat> in this regard, it's not only that, they must be knowing about the kind of scrum ceremonies, what is to be implemented, how this can be implemented, all that stuff. In this regard, if we are applying for Scrum Master, let me explain you what Scrum Masters do first, then I will get into the next one. So if we being a Scrum Master, when you are working for the team level, wherein we try to understand <clears throat> the amount of effort estimation which our team is investing on and how this can be completed on time followed by if there are any kind of impediments which team is having right so solving those at the same time tracking the progress of work all these things has to be taken care of by the scrum master in this regard the first thing wherein there are some of the job responsibilities i have mentioned so what are the job responsibility i have mentioned here most of this Maybe depends on profile to profile. Sometimes depends on the industry to industry. That may vary slightly, right? But end of the day, whatever the responsibility is being a scrum master, one has to be followed as follows. The one is about we being a scrum master act as a facilitator, wherein we have to facilitate scrum teams. I'm talking about the development teams, all that. At the same time, if there are any kind of impediments which team for basis and all, if there is any. So that has to be solved by the Scrum Master. Let's say a team doesn't understand the right sprint goal, maybe one reason. Or else team may not have a clear understanding over the implementation of the technicalities, especially in context to a particular sprint they are working on. Or else they may not be having the technical understanding to implement the particular sprint. Sometimes they may be missing the kind of deadlines which is given or which was uh, finalized before we are going to start sprint. So there are a lot of impediments for different reasons. Hence, Scrum Masters are the people who act as a facilitator wherein whatever the impediments are there in Scrum will be solved by the Scrum Master. Next, PI planning. This is also <clears throat> one of the core and important element one has to be followed. Uh, PI planning. Uh, I have already made a video on PI planning and it was posted in my channel. All right. So I'll give you the link in description about that video as well. You can have a glance. Right. So PI planning and uh, PI process is something essentially required uh, for a Scrum Master here. Next, tracking the progress of work because we have to track the progress of the work which was uh, initiated by the team because let's say, for example, there is a sprint which will be for two weeks' time. So a team has ensured that in two weeks, they are planning to complete 15 story points if they have taken story points as an estimation I'm talking about. So how many story points done so far? Right. So how many story points balance on every day, on day-to-day -day basis. So it must be a constant tracking of the progress which has to be done by the Scrum Master so that Scrum Masters will be knowing whether the team can complete 15 story points within this two weeks time or not. So for that, different different charts like burn down charts, burn up charts, all these things will be prepared. When we follow Scrum, generally burn down charts, burn up charts will be prepared. But when it comes to Kanban and all, we prepare some cycle time reports, etc. all that. Next, velocity planning. 
because based on the previous uh, work, what is completed by the team, how many more sprints will it be taken for us to reach this release? This is where generally velocity planning comes into picture. And now and then one of the more responsibility being a BA, we need to perform is to understand and impart safe practices because this is where scaled agile practices are. Because managing the team, being a scrum master, the kind of understanding and idea what is that we require is different. But whereas when you are transforming this to multiple teams or for any business unit or for an enterprise level transformation is one of the challenge, but the kind of role we call it as RTE, right? So release train engineers will be there. So for enterprise level transformations and all that. So may not be used a word called scrum master because scrum masters are limited only for a team level, all that, right? So when you are moving on to the next level, agile release train, release train engineers will be there, right? So, but initial understanding, if needed, I'd say, because I don't say this is required for all the profiles, because Scrum Master senior profiles who are having agile Scrum certifications, like scaled agile Scrum certification and all everything, they may be required to act as a release train engineer, right? So in this regard, this is needed which is an optional end of the day. Next, coaching the teams, that sort of knowledge even required because we need to coach the teams, uh, even sometimes behavioral coaching, right? So we need to uh, set the behavior of a customer, right? So uh, team members, right? So coaching skills also required. The reason why senior scrum masters have the next level hierarchical process wherein they can move into the agile coaching side and they can become agile coaches, principal agile coaches, after that enterprise agile coach, right? So they can transform in coming fields, right? So coaching teams is what something being into scrum master role one has to be good with. At the same time, addressing the impediments as is stated in the beginning, addressing the impediments and solving those. Along with this, supporting C and C D DevOps teams and all because when there is an operations of implementation nowadays we do we are adopting DevOps practices because continuous improvement and continuous integration as well as continuation deployment and delivery is what something which requires because a lot of requirements come in between where there must be some creation some C A pipeline C A C D pipeline pipeline is required to create so that. If there are if there are any new changes happens in between our new requirements, which has to be uh, updated in a sequential manner so that there won't be any confusion over the implementation testing, all that. This is where generally CA, CD pipelines and DevOps teams and all everything comes into picture, right? So this is also one of the key and important element one need to be known with. Next, managing the budgets because agile budgeting, of course, when you are applying for senior business analyst roles are more than that. So because we will be participating in the agile budget, budgeting will be there. Of course, there are different, different budget techniques which normally we follow. Mm -hmm. So when we are moving to the project management side, etc., all that. So agile budgeting is what something which normally we need to be known, followed by scrum maturity release planning. So these are the responsibilities one has to be followed. Now, when it comes to the functional skills and all, we, have missed, we need to have, because this is the one which I'm addressing because most of the people come from non-IT even, because non-IT also, they will, they will come for Scrum Master, even non-IT as well. So whenever they are coming from non-IT side, it's always important for us to understand uh, the functional skills, what are the functional skills they have and all everything that they have to be followed with. When it comes to the functional skills and all, we must be knowing about the Agile Manifesto principles. People come from non it will face this problem. Okay, Agile Manifesto principles, they must be good with. At the same time, they must have a clear understanding over the Scrum framework. At the same time, uh, safe and Agile practices, if it is into business or enterprise transformation, workforce planning, or definition of ready, definition of done. So these kind of skill sets is required from the functional context or so, whatever you can call. Next technical context, we need to have a complete understanding over the SDLC process, which is something required. At the same time, we need to have the understanding difference between the traditional practices to agile. 
followed by how and what are the different different scrum ceremonies we follow, right? Like it can be daily scrim, daily sprint planning, daily scrum review, retrospections. What are the scrum artifacts we have, like product backlog grooming? So to have the practical knowledge, it's always important for us to choose any one tool because there are a lot many. I'm mentioning few in this, right? So one is Jira, Rally, Azure DevOps, all that. And when we are working on the DevOps teams, it's always important for us to understand the CI/CD pipeline because we are not the one who creates CI/CD pipelines. DevOps engineers do that. But when it comes to the Scrum Master role, wherein you need to understand CI/CD pipelines, if any DevOps environment or DevOps implementation is performing by the organizations, this is where something which we have to be known with. Next, Kanban. Understanding over the Kanban is also one of the key and important element because some people follow Scrum, some people follow Kanban, uh, some people follow XP, like extreme practices by implementing test-driven development, behavioral-driven development, all that. And the last one about the administrative activities, I always say it is optional because uh, some organizations, depends on the size of the organization and all, they may require some Jira admin activities also for a Scrum Master, wherein creating some workflows, queries, configuration of screens, fields, all that. So that basic Jira administrative activities, if we have basic, with that, because to what extent are we knowing, are we learning? That's a different context because that is depends on individual to individual vary. But what are the different Jira admin activities which normally will be performed by those kind of skill sets required? So these are the skill sets which are needed for us. And these are the uh, few of the key skills which I have mentioned, like not SDLC, Scrum, Capacity Planning, Velocity, CICD, and different, different tools in DevOps like Jenkins, Bitbucket, et cetera, all that. Now, when it comes to the focused areas, if when we are applying for opportunities, we may be having multiple roles we see in the industry. Either it can be in a form of Scrum Master, it's something it can be in a form of technical Scrum Master. Some will be in a form of project manager or project manager comes Scrum Master, like that kind of. And the industry, majorly software services industry, service industry or product companies or consulting companies. Even non-IT side, even finance industries or banking, insurance, healthcare organizations require Scrum Masters to manage within their uh, organization for a particular team level or business unit level, or maybe for enterprise level. So if it is enterprise level and all, again, as I stated earlier, because enterprise level transformation is required. So wherein basic understanding over the responsibilities of a scrum master is not sufficient. You need to have a complete understanding over the business agility, enterprise agility, wherein we can become uh, agile release train, release train engineer side. So that sort of knowledge is required. So always senior level scrum master roles wherein we can transform to the next level. At the same time, departments, even software and project and program management departments will also be comes under this category. At the same time, role category is uh, focused more on the software development side or maybe even non-IT also. This is what and how usually if you are a scrum master, when you are applying for the job opportunities, these sort of skill sets and these sort of responsibilities one has to be performed with. And scrum masters are more scenario based because there are few roles in the field of IT like business analyst, scrum masters, product owner, project manager, right? So these are the roles, product manager. These are the roles which are scenario based. Because if there is a scenario, what is the, what is that you are trying to, uh, uh, how you are going to solve this, right? So what kind of uh, uh, solving techniques you have followed, right? So how you have addressed this problem, what were your recent what were your recent challenges you have come across? So this is all about scenario based understanding for these kind of roles which are essentially required. So. Scrum Master, it's all scenario-based understanding. One has to be known with. It's not only about the practical understanding, practical approach, but scenario-based learning is all something which Scrum Master must be good with to excel in their uh, professional career. So once we are working as a B, uh, Scrum Master, or else when you are applying for job opportunities, those are all something which will be helpful to us. 
So this is all about um, today's uh, video. I hope uh, this video uh, helpful to the people who are applying for uh, Scrum Master opportunities, Scrum Master, Scrum Master project manager, right? So different, different job opportunities and all. If you require any kind of uh, job description based coaching as well as Scrum Master or project management coaching, all that, please reach out to the contact details which will be posted in below to this video. Thank you.